Hi everybody, I'm really happy that you enjoyed my last Kungi video and thank you so much for sharing how the game works and how the game is called in your own country. It was really interesting to know, so thank you for that and let's get back on our Korean lesson. So today we're going to learn how to conjugate past and future tense. And let's start from the past tense. When a stem word has a or o vowel, so I hope you remember what stem word is. So in every verb, there is a base form like, like these guys, all the base verb ends with ka, right? Inside the base verb, there is the stem word, which is the word right before ta. So in these words, these are the stem words, right? If the stem word has a or o vowel, like these guys, this one has a vowel, right? Like a, o, a, right? So when a stem word has a or o vowel, you're gonna put, oh, let me use this pen, you're gonna put atta or asayo. So you're gonna replace ta with atta or asayo. And here, some of you might be wondering, what is the difference between ta ending and yo ending? So we all know what yo ending is, right? This is the chunden my form. Okay, so let me zoom in first. Okay, so this is the chunden my form, right? So this is the conversational form, right? And other conversational forms include at Sunida, right? This is also tundemai, but this is a more polite and respectful version of tundemai than yo, right? And then there is panmai, like asso. So if you remove yo, then it becomes panmai, right? So these three are the conversational form. But when a sentence ends in ta, this is most often used in a written form. So when you're writing a diary or a journal, an article, or even a book, you use ta ending in a sentence. So that's the difference between ta ending and yo ending. And since yo ending is the most commonly used conversational form and the one that you'll most likely use often, so we're going to practice with yo form and ta form. So these are the verbs that has a or o vowel in a stem word, right? So we're going to have to put atta or asayu to conjugate it into a past form. So alda is a verb that means to know. And if you want to make it into a past form, you should you should replace ta with atta, right? Atta or asayu, right? So al asso yo or arata would be the past form and salda same with this one you leave the stem verb as it is and then just replace ta with asso yo oh i forgot to tell you the meaning of salda it means to live so alda is no and arasayo is new because it's the past form and salda is live and sarasayo is lived and again if you want to make it into a written form you can replace oyo with ta right so arata or sarata and takta okay so this is an adjective that means to be small uh, so takta is not a verb, but it's an adjective. So we treat certain adjectives as a verb. So when we conjugate an adjective, it follows the same rule as verbs. So I'm going to explain further on this soon. But for now, let's just follow the same rule that we just learned. Takta means to be small. And when you want to say something was small, you can put asayu, like like the verb, right? It follows the same rule. So usually adjective is used in these two ways. One is the complementary usage and another is the modifying usage. So for example, I am small. This adjective is the complementary um, element of the subject, right? But this one, although same in form, has a different usage, which is it directly modifies the noun that comes after it. 
So in English, in both complementary usage and in modifying usage, um, the form is the same, right? But in Korean, that is not the case. So I am small in Korean is 저는 작아요. 저는 작아요. But I am a small child is used like this. 저는 작은 아이예요. 저는 작은 아이예요. Then you can see that 작아요 and 작은 has a different form. So I explain more about how to conjugate an adjective in Korean in the lesson above here. I will put the link above here. You can check that lesson out. But here I want you to know that when an adjective is used as a complementary element in a sentence in Korean, it is considered more of a verb. So it's treated like a verb. So we call it a descriptive verb. What I mean by that is, in this sentence, this shirt is small. So this is the subject of the sentence and is is the verb of the sentence, right? And small is the complementary adjective in this sentence. Same with this one, subject, verb, right? And this is the complementary adjective. So in English, the verb and an adjective is separate. When when you make this sentence into a future sentence, you can just change the form of the verb is into will be, right? But in Korean, we change the adjective form of the adjective altogether. So so when an adjective is the complementary element in a sentence, you can think of it as a descriptive verb that includes both the verb and the adjective altogether. So when an adjective is the descriptive verb, it follows the same conjugation rule. It follows the same conjugation rule of a verb. So 작다 is actually the base adjective. So 작다 is actually the base adjective of to be small. And an adjective by itself can be the present form and the future form or even the past form, which is 작았어요. 작았어요 because we treat the adjective as a descriptive verb. So again, when an adjective is used as a complementary element in a sentence in Korean, it's treated as a descriptive verb, so it can be either a past form, present form, or even future form. And for the modifying usage, again, I explained this in detail in the, in the lyric lesson that I linked uh, a few minutes ago. You can check that out. It's a lot simpler than complementary usage. Um, so that's the gist of the Korean adjective that you want to know. And let's continue our past conjugation lesson. And 오다 means to come. And when you want to say came, you can put 오 안 so you. However, this is actually wrong. So this is part of the irregular form. So in this case, 왔어요 becomes 왔어요. So we don't say 왔어요, but uh, 왔어요 is the right form of the past tense of come. And 보다 means to see or watch or look, any kind of uh, sight related verb, it means all of that. And same with this one, you put 보. And then you put asoyo. So in this case, puasoyo is the right form, unlike wasoyo, puasoyo. But puasoyo is also acceptable. So puasoyo is the abbreviated form of puasoyo, and both are acceptable past verb of puda. And I put these two verbs in a separate section because these are part of the irregular form. And I mean irregular as in something that doesn't follow the standard rule. The standard rule, like putting asayo. So kata means to have. And you can see that this one has a follow. So according to the standard rule, this one should be kata soyo. However, this is the word that does not exist in Korean, and we instead say ka tot soyo. soyo. Or if you want to make it into a written form, you can say ka tot, ka right? 
ta, right? So this one is an irregular form that doesn't follow the standard rule that we just learned. So there are a couple of verbs like this and there is not like a logic behind it. It's something that you have to memorize each one. Katta is one of those verbs that have irregular past tense. And same with moruda. So moruda means to not know. And when it's conjugated into a past verb, it becomes... So, so the stem verb changes its form to bol. And then you put lap so yo. Or if you want to make it into written form, lap ta, right? So this is another irregular past tense you kind of have to memorize. 알다, 알았어요. 살다, 살았어요. 작다, 작았어요. 오다, 왔어요. 보다, 봤어요. Or 보았어요 is also acceptable. But 오았어요 isn't acceptable. And 왔어요 is acceptable, right? 가졌어요. So we just practice conjugating um, the, the verbs that has a or o in it. Okay, so moving on to the second type of verb, when the stem word has other vowels. So what I mean by other is the vowels other than a, o. When the stem word has any other vowels other than a, o, then that verb is included in the category number two. So like these guys, they all end in vowels other than a, or this one ends in we, u, u, i, o, and u, right? So these verbs so these are all the verbs that are included in uh, category number two. And in this case, you put 얻다, 얻어요. So number one, it was 앗. So in number one, it was 앗, right? But here, it's 얻. So let's move right into practice. So 되다, when it's, co when it's conjugated into a past verb, right? Or if you want to make it into a conversational form, right? I'll just go with the conversational form in the rest of the verse because there is not enough space. So chuda conjugated into a past verb. Chu so right? Oh again I forgot to tell you the meaning of each verb. So tweda means to become. And chuda means to give. Ulda means to cry. And itta and opta. Uh, I mentioned this once in my subject marking particle lesson. Uh, but itta and opta uh, kind of has a lot of meanings. One of which is to have and this is to not have. So these two are the words that have opposite meanings to each other. And also this means to be. It also means not be, and this also means there is and there isn't. And tta, tta means to listen or hear. So let's continue conjugating. Ulda, past verb. Ul, otsayo. And itta, there is, and when you want to say there was, it. So, so you. And there isn't and there wasn't is up, so, so you. And again, I separated this verb because this one's also part of the irregular verb. So, tta, the past form is t. So, the stem verb changes its form and tigut bachim changes to real bachim, right? And there you put. So listen and listened. So 되다 becomes 되었어요. 주다's past verb 주었어요. 울다 울었어요. 있다 있었어요. 없다 없었어요. 듣다 들었어요. So other than irregular forms, conjugating past verb isn't really that confusing or difficult, right? And there is the last type of a verb. So a verb that ends in hada. So like these verbs. So hada alone means 
to do, but there are many types of verb that include hada in it, like these guys, and in this case, you replace ha with he. So it becomes hetta or in a con in a conversation form, hesayo. So Let's conjugate these verbs into a past verb. So really good thing about verb that ends in hada is that there is no irregular form. It just follows the consistent rule of putting hetta hesayo. Okay, so kungbu hada means to study. So kungbu alone means a noun that means study. And kungbu hada, by putting hada after a noun, it becomes a verb. And if we conjugate it into a past verb, kungbu ha becomes het, right? Kungbu hetta in a written form or kungbu hesayo in a conversational form. Barhada means to speak or to say or to tell everything that has to do with oral speech. We say barhada and the past form would be malhetta or malhetsayo in a conversational form, right? And pudapada, this one is quite advanced vocabulary, but I just included it because it's a good word and it means to pay something back or give something back in a good way, not in like a revengeful, retaliating way, but in a good way. And when you want to conjugate it into a past form, bodap hetta, bodap hesayo, right? Hada alone means to do, and this one is easy. You just change it to hetta or hesayo in a conversational form. Okay, so now let's practice translating these English sentences into Korean. I knew Jeff. So the subject comes first. 저는 Jeff. Object comes second. 제프 And you put an object marker. 저는 제프를 knew. So do you remember what know is in Korean? It's 알다 it's the base verb of to know. And when you want to conjugate it into a past form, since this is the verb that has a vowel, you simply put a, right? And then make it into a conversational form. 저는 제프를 알 알았어요. I, Jeff, knew. I knew Jeff. How about the second sentence? So let's change it into a written form here. So in a written form, you don't have to write a formal form of I. You can just say, you can just go with 나, the informal form of I. 나는 And the verb has to come last. So let's translate this first. In Korea, 한국 is Korea. 한국 and E is another particle that we are going to learn in another lesson. This is a particle that has a lot of meaning like in, at, to. When we say we live in somewhere, then we say E particle after the location. 나는 한국에, I in Korea, lived. So 살다 is the base verb of to live, right? And since this one and this one also has a vowel, so you should put at, and since it's a written form, end the sentence with 다. 살았다. 나는 한국에 살았다. And how about this one? We saw that movie. So we in Korean is 우리 and subject marking particle saw that movie. So that movie is an object of the sentence. So this has to come first. And that is Ku movie is young hua. So we that movie and since this is an object, we put object marking particle. 우리는 그 영화를 saw. So to see in Korean is 보다, right? And this one is the verb that has o vowel, right? So this one as well. 
We replace ta with 보았다. 우리는 그 영화를 보았다. Or if you want to make it into conversational form, you can say 보았어요. 우리는 그 영화를 보았어요. We that movie saw. And number four, I didn't know that. So I should come first. 저는 that. Um, so you might be thinking, oh, if that here is 그, then this should be 그 as well. And that is actually uh, not correct. So this that and this that is different in that this one is the modifying that. So this one modifies is the movie, right? So this is kind of a modifying adjective, whereas this that is the object of the sentence, right? So this one is more of a noun, right? And this one is an adjective. So in English, an adjective that and noun that has the same form, but in Korean, that's not the case. The adjective that is 그, and when that is a noun, it can be 그것, 그것, or you can also say 그거. So 그것 or 그거 means that as a noun. And since this is the object in the sentence, you can put the object marking particle. And since this one doesn't have um, the, the, the final consonant, 를, object marking particle, you should be at it. So 저는 그것을 or 저는 그거를 didn't know. So do you remember what didn't know is in Korean? It's 모르다. So it's this verb over here, but it doesn't follow the regular rule. It's an irregular form. So 몰랐어요 is the past verb of 모르다. 몰랐어요. So this is something that you have to memorize. So 저는 그것을 몰랐어요. Means I didn't know that. 저는 그것을 몰랐어요. 저는 그거를 몰랐어요. The next sentence, I became BTS's fan. So again, you start with the subject, 저는 BTS's fan. So let's just go with BTS. And do you know what was the possessive particle? 의, right? 저는 BTS의 So fan is just pen in Korean. 저는 BTS의 팬 and became, do you, do you remember what become is in Korean? It's 되다, 되다, right? And when you want to conjugate it into past form, it's 되었어요. Because it's a verb that has vowel other than a or o, right? So it's the number two category, so you should put 얻. So 되었어요 is the past form of it. So you have to say 되었 so you and I didn't put the particle so so far we've learned that 을 and 를 are the object marking particles right but here the correct particle is actually 이 저는 BTS의 팬이 되었어요 so if you remember from my subject marking particle lesson um, when using the second subject marker 이 or 가 there was the fixed expression, right? So certain verbs accept only the second subject marker as its particle, and the two of those verbs were 있다 and 없다. And there are actually more verbs there, and one of them is and one of them is 되다, which means to become. So when you say I became an adult, so adult is 어른 in Korean, you want to say 저는. 어른이 되었어요, right? Not 어른을 되었어요 because 되다 is a verb that accepts the second subject marker as its. I hope this makes sense. You listen to music. Okay, so let's change it to 반말. So you should be 너, right? No subject marking particle. No, 는 to music. You listen to music. 
So in English, it's correct to say you listened to music, not you listened music, right? But in Korean, it works without the particle. So you can just say you listened music. So music becomes the straight object of listened. So 너는 음악, so music is 음악 in Korean. So since this is an object, you can put the object marking particle. 너는 음악을. So do you remember what listen was in Korean? It's one over here, and it's one of those irregular form. So 듣다 is to listen, it's the base verb of to listen. And when it becomes the past verb, it's 들었어요. 들었어요. So 너는 음악을. Since we're making it into a panmai, we want to remove you and just say 들었어. 너는 음악을 들었어. You listen to music. And sentence number seven. I studied Korean yesterday. Study in Korean is 공부하다, right? And when you want to make it into a past verb, 공부했다, right? 저는. And in this sentence, there is an adverb. There is a time adverb. Right? So if you remember from my previous lessons, we put we push adverb to the front as much as we can and it has to come before a verb because usually verb is the element in a sentence that comes the very last. So let's push yesterday to the front and put it here. 저는 어제. So 어제 means yesterday. 저는 어제. And next element should be object in a sentence, right? Korean is the object here. So Korean in Korean is 한국어. And since this is an object, object marking particle. 저는 어제 한국어를 공부했어요. 저는 어제 한국어를 공부했어요. I studied Korean yesterday. And our last sentence is I did it. But since there are many ways to say I did it in Korean, let's focus on this specific meaning. So I did it as in it is I who did it. So this is kind of like a review for our subject marking particle lesson. So when you're trying to emphasize who did it, it is I who did it, you should put E or ka, the second subject marking particle, right? So here, the sentence should start with nega. And do you remember what tu is in Korean? Hava. And when it's conjugated into a past verb, it's hetta, right? So let's say panma here. Nega hesso. Nega hesso. I did it. It is I who did it. And some of you might be wondering, then how about it? Where is the object in a sentence? So here in this kind of context, it's best to remove the object because for both parties in a conversation, it's obvious what it is. And the emphasis is on I. So, so it's kind of just more natural to just remove the object completely and just say, 내가 했어. Okay, so now let's move on to the future tense. So future tense is a lot easier than past form. So the stem word ends in vowel or 리을 받침. You put 리을 받침 거예요 or just 거예요. So for example, we learned that 살다 mean, means to live, right? And this verb ends in 리을 받침, right? So in this case, you can just put 거예요 without adding additional 리을 받침 or 을. So the future tense of 살다 is 살 거예요. And another verb that ends in 리을 받침 is 만들다, which means to make. And to make it into a future verb, it's the same. 만들 거예요. 만들 거예요. Very simple, right? And let's look at the verbs that end in vowel, like 보다, 보다, or rest of the 하다 verbs, right? 공부하다. So 보다 means to see, watch, look, right? And the future tense of it is, you just put 리을, you just put 리을 받침, and say 
볼 거예요. And same with this one. This is the last letter of the stem word, right? So it ends, it anyways ends in vowel, right? So 공부하, you write all the stems and then put 리얼 같은 공부할 거예요. So unlike these words that has 리얼 받침 at the end of the stem word, at the end of the stem word, this one has no you have to put additional lil batin at the stem. Po becomes pol and koeo, and kungbuha becomes kungbuhal koeo. And there are also verbs whose stem words end in consonants. So all the consonants other than lil. So for example, itta ends in consonant other than lil, and also opta ends in consonant other than lil, takta as well and tta as well. So the stem verb stays as it is and you just put ul, this letter ul, and then put 거예요. 있을 거예요. 있을 거예요 is the future tense of 있다. 있다 means to be or to have, right? And 있을 거예요 means will be or will have. And 없다 likewise it means to not be. And when you want to make it into a future verb, that means will not be, will not be, you can the stem verb as it is and put ö behind it and 거예요. 없을 거예요. And also 작다 means to be small. And when you want to say will be small, it's 작을 거예요. And tutta. tutta means to hear or to listen, and it follows the irregular rule. And so, tigut batin changes to t. And then you put e go e yu. So here you might be questioning, hmm, but this one has a little batim in it, so shouldn't it follow this rule? Uh, but the original verb, the base verb, actually has the stem has the consonant other than liel, right? So this word should be included in this category and has to follow um, this rule. So it's not so it's not to goeyo but to goeyo. Will listen, will hear. So let's practice with our example sentences. I will give the candy. So likewise, you start with subject and object. Satang, satang is candy in Korean. Satang is and then the future tense, right? So 주다 is to give, and when you want to change it into a future tense, since since this is the verb whose stem word 주 ends in vowel, you can put 리을 받침 and connect 거예요. So 주다 리을 받침 거 Can you see this? Okay, 주 거예요. 줄 거예요 would be the right on um, right sentence. I will see the movie. So do you remember what movie was in Korean? 영화 저는 영화를 So we'll see. 보다 is to see, right? And this is and like and like 주다, this is the verb whose stem word ends in vowel. So, 보 and 리을 받침 거에요. 저는 영화를 볼 거에요. I will watch the movie. I will see the movie. I will study hard. So, hard is an adverb. And, and you can say 열심히 in Korean. And if you remember the adverb rule, it should be placed before the verb, right? 저는 you put the adverb first and then the verb. So 저는 열심히 공부 하다 is to study, right? And since this one also ends in vowel, you can simply put 공부하 the stem word comes and you just put 리을 받침 and connect it with 거예요. 저는 열심히 공부할 거예요. I will study hard. And number four, this one might be a bit tricky. There will be class tomorrow. So 
Tomorrow is the adverb, the time adverb. And tomorrow is Neil. So let's write it. So let's put the adverb first. Neil. There will be class. So do you remember what to be is in Korean? It's itta, right? And itta verb only accepts e or ka as its uh, subject marker, right? So class in Korean is suop. So you should connect suop with the second subject marker. So neil suop e, right? Since this one has the patin suobi. So when you write it like this, de suobi itta, this is the present. This is the present tense, right? Tomorrow there is class. But if you want to make it into a future tense, remove ta. And this verb has the consonant in its stem word. So you connect it with ul, right? This verb, right? ul, when it ends in consonant, other than the ul, ul, goeyo. So, de suobi isu goeyo is the correct sentence. And let's look at the last sentence. I will listen to music. So if you remember, music is 음악 and listen to 듣다, right? So subject come first and then put object 음악을 and then will listen to. So if you remember, 듣다 is included in this category, but it also follows the irregular rule. So, 듣 becomes 들 and then, and the, then the rest of the conjugation follows. So, 들은 거예요 is the future tense of 듣다. So, 저는 음악을 not 듣, but 듣 changes to 들 and you put 을 거예요. 저는 음악을 들을 거예요. I will listen to music. Okay, so thank you for following this rather long lesson and I hope that you review what we learned here and remember the rules of past and future verb conjugation and also to be careful with the irregular forms and make sure to note them separately. Anyways, great job guys and if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye! Annyeong!